You don't have relationship problems. You have personal problems which are manifesting in your relationship. Those are the exact words that I told one of my clients at the end of last year when he came to me because his relationship was starting to go into chaos. They were arguing all the time. He would shut down emotionally and they lost that sense of connection and it all turned into this clusterfuck of blaming, shaming, and it really was getting them nowhere. Their sex life was dissipating and the whole thing was in shambles. Now, the reason for this and the reason that I say that it's a personal issue rather than a relationship issue is due to what is known as the theory of attachment and more specifically, their individual attachment styles. Okay, so there are four attachment styles and they each depend on the relationship that you shared with your parents when you were a kid. Okay, so really, there were two different vectors that we're looking at here. The first is the high anxiety types with low emotional avoidance. So these are the. anxious types. So anxious attachment style types grew up with parents who were extremely coddling. So they gave them too much attention, too much affection. They didn't give them a lot of freedom. And as a result, they've developed this relationship with relationships that they're always really needing that reassurance and that comfort and that security. So these types can really be the type of people who are really needing assurance all the time, right? They're really always concerned whether or not their partner really loves them, uh, whether or not they're going to leave them or betray them. They have low trust in men. It can really manifest as a lot of jealousy and a lot of fear that their partner is going to leave them or maybe cheat on them or find someone better. And like I said, this really stems from having a relationship with your parents that was very it really lacked freedom and independence. It was very coddling and very loving and very secure uh, in the sense that you weren't, you know, wondering whether or not your parents cared about you because of the second example, which I'll run you through in a moment, where they don't give that security and comfort and love. But at the same time, they've developed too much of an attachment with that need for security and that feeling. And so it creates this dissonance and, and this anxiety whenever they feel like that secure uh, love and support and attachment is lacking, okay? Now, the second example are those who are high in emotional avoidance. Now, this is known as the avoidant attachment style. So those who have an avoidant attachment style had parents who raise them in an opposite way to the anxious type. So essentially they were actually given too much freedom and independence. They weren't given much security and love and closeness and they didn't really feel that they got those needs met from their parents. And so they actually become untrusting and they feel unsafe from our relationships and really building trust with people because they feel like they might be betrayed in some way. So avoidant types can be the types who are they shut down in arguments. They don't know how to communicate their emotions properly. Uh, they can be dismissive of the other person's emotions, right? And ultimately, they don't have a lot of emotional intelligence and empathy when it comes to their relationships, all of which are strengths for the anxious types. Now, these two types, although they are maladaptive, they tend to attract each other, okay? So the anxious types... Uh, you know, tend to attract to the avoidant types. And obviously that triggers their anxious, secure, uh, sorry, their anxious attachment type because the avoidant types, when they start to get too close with someone, they can start to pull back. So they have this push and pull of closeness and then avoidance, uh, which really triggers the anxious types. And it really makes them concerned for the relationship and it actually makes them seek out the avoidant partner more, which only makes the avoidant partner start to take further steps back. Now, there is a third category here, which is really a synthesis of these two. And what this really is, the anxious avoidant types, or the otherwise known as the fearful. So essentially, of the fearful or anxious avoidant attachment style, whichever one you want to call it, really were brought up in an environment where neither of the parental needs were met. Okay, so... Essentially, not only were they given too much freedom and they weren't coddled or loved or reassured in any way, uh, they were also, sorry, let me rephrase that. So not only were they not shown a secure uh, relationship from their parents, not only were they not given a lot of freedom, they were also given too much freedom. And what that means is that the parents really didn't give them any love or support, but they also really didn't provide them with any of their security needs. 
Uh, and ultimately, they just they didn't show them any form of affection. They weren't too close with them, but they were also trying to keep them within the house, trying to keep them within their, I guess, grip. Uh, but at the same time, not really providing them with the emotional support and security that they would otherwise get with the anxious types or the, the upbringing that they had. So anxious avoidant types are really a synthesis of the two. So the symptoms are obviously a synthesis of the two as well, where they can be very push and pull. They can be very, uh, I guess, degrading of the other person's emotions and not able to understand them fully. Uh, and ultimately, they don't have a lot of emotional intelligence. And so they can really have this like push pull dynamic, lack of trust, anxiety about the relationship. Uh, and this obviously erodes at the connection that you have with that person. So if you are an anxious avoidant, an anxious or an avoidant type, or I guess I should refer to this as a fearful type, there is a way to transcend these attachment styles and overcome the symptoms that you are experiencing in your relationship and ultimately repair your ability to connect deeply with people without feeling like you either are fearful that they're going to leave or anxious that they're going to leave and without having this push-pull dynamic where you aren't able to understand the other person's emotions and you get afraid of commitment and ultimately pull back when things get too serious or shut down in your uh, relationships and in arguments and stuff like that. Now this attachment style is known as The secure attachment style. So the secure attachment style is ultimately the one that we should all strive for. It really provides a foundation of emotional security and emotional intelligence that you're both able to communicate in a way that isn't dismissive. Uh, there's no push and pull. There isn't this like shutting down in arguments. You're able to settle disputes in a reasonable manner and in a way that both people feel understood. And ultimately, these people were generally raised, the people who are innately secure attachment types, were generally raised in very secure environments where they were provided the benefits of all these different scenarios. They were given a good amount of freedom, right, to go and pursue what they want, do what they want, but also be able to come home to love and security and affection and that connection that they desire. Now, how do you overcome these different attachment styles? The solutions are a bit different for each of them. If you are an anxious type, you need to start to develop your, your really your self-confidence and self-assuredness. You need to start to do things that prioritize your own needs and have healthy boundaries so that you don't get taken advantage of by either of these two types and ultimately start to develop your own self-worth. Because if you don't have a strong foundation of self-worth and, and self-belief and self-confidence and self-love, then you're going to always depress your own needs and prioritize the needs of others because you believe that theirs are innately and inherently more important than your own, which of course isn't the case. Uh, there is also an element of having to start to develop more trust for your partner, which obviously is, as well stems from that increase in self-worth. If you believe that you're worthy of more, you're more likely to trust your partner to not try and pursue something that's you know, a better opportunity than you, for example. So really the two key factors here are enhancing trust and enhancing your self-worth. Now the avoidant types have a need to really develop emotional intelligence. And that doesn't only mean emotional intelligence within themselves, but also emotional intelligence and empathy with being able to understand their partner's emotions and their attachment style and the fact that they do have these anxious needs. Now, if you are an avoidant type, a lot of this is going to come down to becoming aware of the fact that you have this avoidant attachment style and that you do have a tendency to pull back and run away when things do get close and to shut down when arguments arise because you don't know how to deal with the emotional side of it. So you have to become aware of the fact that you are an avoidant type and that you do avoid conflict, uh, not even conflict, but you avoid the emotions attached to conflict uh, and of course the emotions attached to connection and to commitment with someone and so you have to become aware of that now the fearful types are a combination of both there's a, a massive element of this which is self-worth based you have to increase your self-worth and the self-love that you have so that you don't feel like you're lower than or less than your partner you have to see yourselves as equals otherwise you will always feel disempowered you will always feel anxious that they're going to leave but you also have to become aware of your tendency to run away whenever things get too close, whenever there is conflict, you have to work on your emotional intelligence and empathy and compassion for the other person. And ultimately, you really need to develop your ability to handle conflict well. 
If you're able to start to look at all these different vectors, depending on which one you're in, which box you fit in, and you're able to become aware of these different areas you have to improve, you will be able to move yourself into a securely attached position and develop that attachment style so that you can have thriving relationships. Trust me when I say this, I've been here, I now am here, it is possible. You just firstly have to become aware of it and look at the symptoms and start to make these improvements. Now, if that was helpful, leave a subscribe and a like and all the things uh, and watch this video wherever it is, probably over here somewhere. Uh, for more videos like this. And this one is the one that I think will help you the most based on this video. So yeah, have a great day. Enjoy. I'll see you in the next one.